Do you have issues retaining clients in any way? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I losing clients? Why do clients ever change from you know my service to another service? They see a new shiny object, you know, another another place solicits them, what have you. Have you ever asked the question or thought about a retention strategy? In this video, I'm not gonna give you like the exact like a, a golden standard retention strategy with like bullet points and everything like that because I don't really have one specifically. I have some main things that I want to talk to you about and I have like an actual anecdote use case that I think applies to a lot of people that I really want to share because I just think that a lot of people could va could benefit from it. So my name is Mark Joe Samanti. This is MJSWP. I'm a developer. I've had an agency, find a tech for a few years. Uh, I've learned a lot. I've experienced a lot. We've done a lot of things. I know there's a lot of developers, agency owners out there that have questions, comments, issues. We all go through the same thing. I'm just trying to share stuff that uh, that I'm dealing with. So hopefully we can all have a discussion and we can you know exchange some value. So let's get into this one. I want to keep this one pretty brief because, uh, like I said, I, I want to keep it at a high level. But the reason I'm making this video is I got a question. I saw a question and I, I had to comment on it uh, in an online forum where it was, what was your what it basically it was to, to the effect of what has your uh, like what is your best retention strategy and then what makes your clients stay right so I'm assuming that this person has had people leave them and like we all have you know once or twice or whatever you know sometimes it's you firing clients sometimes it's a client seeing something else like out there sometimes they close their business I mean it could be a slew of reasons what I want to specifically talk about is the concept of why it's like a couple things a couple ideas that you should definitely have in place and i want to give you a story to back this up i'm going to start with the story when i started my agency and as i was as i was growing we'll say in the last let's say in the last year it's been much better six months to a year it's been much better but let's say from you know year two really since the beginning of it right so like a year a year plus back in time what I would do is I would build a website for X amount of dollars. I would then maintain host and everything like that. We'll call it a website care plan because it's what everybody knows it as, right? The hosting, the maintenance, updating plugins, you know, whatever you want to build into that solution. What I was doing was, was I was a really bad operator of that part of my business. I, I had a good setup, so like everything was getting updated, everything was getting monitored, there was no problems or anything, no security issues, but... I did not set good expectations. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how this all ends up coming back to the retention thing. I did not set good expectations of, hey, client, you are gonna pay X number of dollars per month. And, and for that, you are going to get, you know, all these things that we need with WordPress websites. You have to educate them on that, obviously. All, you're gonna get all this value. But what they kind of saw that as was that number, because I didn't set the expectation well enough, they thought that that was also like, oh, we need changes made and we need things added to the website or whatever, this, that, or the other thing, uh, that is also included in there. Albeit as well, certain projects I did not price accordingly at all. I kind of just said, and I would never recommend doing this um, unless you have a really good business model that is extremely well-defined. I did one one job was, okay, don't pay me a development fee because we didn't really know what we we're developing yet. Just pay me $500 a month and we'll do it. Terrible idea. I would not recommend doing that, again, unless you have like a really tight expectations and scope defined. But my point is that what I would what ended up happening, okay? So imagine that you build a website, then you're getting paid monthly, but that monthly is not the scope of the monthly is not very good. So you don't know the client thinks that you're doing extra stuff, they'll email you here and there saying, "Hey, can you add this, change this, whatever?" And me being a bad business person at that time and also doing a bad a disservice to my clients, I would just email after email do the thing and slowly build up like resentment and dread for the next email that came with each one I would just be like oh my god they're gonna email me again ask me for something and I'm gonna like it's gonna pull me away from other things I'm not gonna get added revenue I'm just gonna be more stressed it's a nightmare so you know one of the things that I responded to in that forum and like the big thing is you have to always have honesty and transparency and setting good expectations so that's you know that's evident but some people don't do that but I think that's a big one the next one is always being always wanting to help them grow their business, not just build and host. So I'm getting into that. And then this is the whole thing is always being willing to help, but don't do it for free. So what happens as you as you build up that resentment, right? I go from the person that's like, oh, I wanna help, we can have this, 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 an idea. 
and then I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't even wanna talk to my clients. This is literally how people end up leaving. I don't wanna talk to my clients because I'm not gonna, I haven't set the expectation that my time and my, and my knowledge is valuable, so I'm gonna like give them an idea they're gonna expect it's free or something. It's just, it's just a bad, bad cycle. So what happened was I just went through that whole cycle. I was just dread, dread, dread the whole time of every time I was getting a new email, it would be like, oh, now I have to do something else for free. Terrible, terrible, terrible place to be. So then what you have to do is you have to switch your outlook, your position, your business model, whatever, and you have to say, okay, my care plan, you can do whatever you want here, but I'm just, but the way that I did it, this is the way I did it. I changed my care plan so it only covers the technical integrity of the website, nothing else. Like it's hosting, maintenance, security, everything like that, but there's no added time involvement for me other than just monitoring and maintaining. So it's like, we're not adding new things to your website. I'm not changing content. We're not adding new pages. There's no, there's no design changes or anything like that. We built the site to this scope. That's what it's gonna be. I'm more than happy though to change things. I'm more than happy to add things. I want to, I'm, all, I'm honestly gonna give you ideas probably. The thing is though, those are beyond the scope of this monthly and those are gonna be, those are gonna be quoted and priced as like individual product costs project costs rather. So if you want, you know, three new pages, you want me to change like the header up, you want me to do this, that, the other thing, that's an added project cost. You want to add features, things like that. You have to scope it, then you have to do it. Now, this might seem for some people like extremely straightforward, but for a long time, I was just like, I would quote projects to get them and it was just a bad idea. And it, and it, it only hurts everyone. Like it does not benefit the client because then you're not, if you're a good agency owner, developer, whatever you wanna call yourself, designer, and you actually wanna get involved with the people's businesses and help them grow from the technology standpoint, then you are just gonna be, you cannot help other people if you don't have literally the funds to survive and like grow your business. Your businesses grow together, ultimately, like yours and your clients. That's how it has to work. So again, that's kind of the, the concept there and just something that I really struggled with for a very long time. So I'm, if you are that type of person, if you are doing too much free work, don't, that's not, that's not beneficial to your clients because I guarantee you that at a certain point, you, either one of two things are gonna happen. Either you are gonna be extremely dreadful and you're not gonna want to help them as much because it's all free, because that's how you just be wasting time, money, energy, all that, or you're literally gonna go out of business. I think about this one, this is the last point that I'll make. I think about this all the time. It's like when I think about, should I charge my client for XYZ? Sometimes I get in that mindset, whether it's like a smaller thing or whatever. You could just charge them less money. That's, the, that's actually the, the solution. But if you have this problem, think of it like this. If you don't raise your prices, and I'm not saying gouge people, I'm saying if you don't put your prices at a, at a reasonable place where you understand your numbers and like you're making enough money to survive, you are going to go out of business at some point. And then what's gonna happen to your client? Like, your, like think about it like that. Would your client... Assuming, and again, I'm, we're generalizing with the client thing. Hopefully, these are you're, you're dealing with good people. You're you're gonna lose people other you know other ways or whatever. But I'm talking like the the standard good you know decent client. Would your client rather pay a little bit extra or pay for what you're doing instead of getting stuff for free, or would they rather you like go out of business and have to find somebody else? Like, because that's literally what's gonna happen if you don't if you don't run a good business. So. Again, super high level here, but you know, to, to summarize everything, I made that adjustment and now I love getting emails from my clients because it's already a warm lead. Like it's, it's like an inbound lead from people that I already know, that already know, like, and trust me and I enjoy working with, right? Excuse me, and we can also see like the website grow together in a way, like their whole business grows together and, and benefits from that, right? So, I mean, it's just, it's so much better dealing with clients and people that you've already that you've already worked with, um, and obviously you can get new clients as well. But just like the way that that is all set up and the way that everything has came together there, just it's it, it's it's way better because they they understand we've set the expectations we've reset the expectations in some cases, it makes so much more sense, uh, and they have the expectation now that if more work is going to cost more money, and then the last the last bit of it like I mentioned earlier is. I can actually help them grow their business by being proactive and give them ideas. Because it's like, I present an idea, I tell them how much it's gonna cost, and they're they're ready to pay it because they already know that everything is in sync and in line. Which is way better for me. 
I hope that you get some value out of this uh, because I know that it, it plagued me for a long time. And, um, you know, that is my best high level retention strategy at this point. Uh, it's one bit of it, but you know, it's, it's a really big one, especially in our industry. So uh, that's it guys. I hope that, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, different, you know, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, anything at all, drop it in the comments down below. Uh, and I appreciate you guys checking out the video as always. Thank you for the support. I'll talk to you in the next one.